Hello. I want to give you a little tutorial on the Animation Helper plugin for Paint.net. I've got Paint.net open right here. Let me real quick just show you where you're supposed to put the plugin, just in case you don't know. Here I've got um, I've got the Paint.net directory open, so I'm, I'm opening the Paint.net directory, and then there's this Effects directory. Well, you'll want to copy the animation effect into that directory and be sure to do that before you start up paint.net and then when you start up paint.net you'll have under the effects tab uh, under the effects menu you'll have under animation you'll have animation helper we go ahead and bring that up and you'll see that right now there's nothing in it because we have a blank image although the settings from the last time that I used it have been saved and it will do that it will save the at least the cell location the cell location the cell um, width and height and the number of columns frames and, and whether or not you have a pixel border frames per second is and I think it saves a zoom if I remember right and I believe it also saves the folder name that you save uh, if you save any export any cells animation cells out so let me pull open an actual file graphics file so we can take a look at this and now just open the graphics file let me make you aware of something that might that might trip you up let's go back and now let's pull open the animation helper and let's you can see that I have all just black well I have settings in there and I'll tell you right now that these settings are accurate and they're right for this for this particular graphics file but I don't see anything well the reason why I don't see anything is because if you'll see down here on the layers I have the background layer selected so it only works with the currently selected layer so I want to select the layer that has the content that I want to display so I'll select layer 4 here so I go back to the effects animation helper dialog and then here I see my little wizard running around now if if you need any additional help or if you forget or whatever there's if you mouse over and just kinda hover the there is uh, tooltip help as you can see uh, for each of the controls so that's that can be kind of helpful <clears throat> now if I want to change the background color I can come over here and, and uh, use these little arrows and change the background color and this is useful for checking for any kind of artifacts that might be around your cells as they're animating so you can catch things especially if you use uh, if you uh, have anti-aliasing turned on you may have some artifacts that you can't really see with with them static where you can see some see really nicely here whenever they're changed to a particular color or whatever another another thing that you can do in this oh by the way this R resets the background the display background to the default just the, just the default what you started with I'm gonna go back to black um, another thing is if you want if there's if you for some other for some reason or another you want to make a color in your image transparent just so you can see what it might look like if you actually render it you know say used to they would have for the for the cells you would you would say hot pink was the transparent color you can still do that here and you can see what it would actually look like without that what you can do is you put your cursor over the color that you want to make transparent and then you hit the left mouse button and then you'll you can see what it would look like well if it was transparent again you know not something that is really hugely useful to a lot of people but some people it might it might be uh, come in handy sometimes to reset that all you have to do is just right click and then he'll go back to the way he was and let me show you real quick you can also manipulate these things and you can see how that that's that's the width of the cell and that's the height of the cell so you can change those you can change the offsets and you can see how he's kinda moving that way and that way you can also instead of doing this manually you can also come back into the image and say we wanted to get this bat and, and uh, see what his animation looked like all you have to do is do a rectangular selection and select what you want and leave it selected come back up into effects animation animation helper and then there you've got the cell you got the starting cell you see these have these have settings have changed and I know this bat has only five frames and let's make him flap his wings a little faster We'll go black. Oh, and also uh, there's a zoom button here that you can you can fiddle around with and you know see what it looks like actual size or what it looks like however you know ten times the size or whatever that comes in handy also. And oh, the other thing I can we can also export these animation cells as individual files. So what you do is you select a folder here that you want to save it in and then you select what the animation name is that you want so we'll say bat 
fly and then all we have to do is click save frames and I'll go right over here I happen to have this folder open and you'll see it's saved those five animation frames for me and it has numbered each frame so that the first one is uh, numbered zero through the the last one so it's real easy to bring them into some other program that you want okay that's about it and I hope this has been helpful and uh, I hope you enjoy it